Hey everybody, this is Aaron and Scott with Beers and Buddies. And we are coming to you from downtown Flagstaff, Arizona. Yep. yep. Good times. So, uh, just kind of give you guys an idea. If you look at our YouTube channel, the very first content video we ever made was in downtown, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, it's on the outskirts. It's on the outskirts of Flagstaff. Flagstaff at yeah. Historic Brewing Company. So, this is a kind of a homecoming for Scott and I to come back here to make more content for you guys. Yeah, and in fact, we're gonna go back to Historic, but since that time, they've opened up a uh, downtown tasting room, so we're yep. gonna be checking that place out. We're gonna be checking out Dark Sky, Lumberyard, a whole bunch of different yep. breweries. It's gonna be awesome. Yep. So, so, next place. Yes, off we go. Hey everyone, uh, it's Aaron Forrester with Beers and Buddies, and I'm joined, uh, as always, with my counterpart, Scott. So we are actually uh, returning back to Flagstaff, um, and one of the first stops we're uh, hitting today is Dark Sky Brewing. Yeah, yeah. I remember being here I don't know, a couple of years ago, and they were doing some amazing beers. Um, I continue to hear about them, you know, wherever wherever we go throughout the valley, I hear about them, and I uh, see their beers around. So I'm excited to try. Um, try some stuff. Yep. So uh, just to kind of give you an example of some of the things we have here. Uh, we have like a Verano Mexican Lager. I mean, it looks beautiful. Uh, we also have a, oh, I'm sorry, that's the old, that's the old friend. So that's a Czech Pilsner. Then we have the Mexican Lager. Uh, and then there's uh, a la Oscura. I probably mispronounced this, but this is a uh, Imperial Stout aged in Peach Street bourbon barrels uh, with tart cherries, toasted coconut, uh, and, and then coffee. And coffee. Uh, then we have. Oh, there's all, there's so yeah. much stuff here. They got some yeah. sours on here. And all yeah. kinds of stuff. So, and, right, and a juice box, which is part of their heavy fruited sour as well. So, we're gonna just give a couple of these a uh, quick try. Obviously, not maybe not all of them, but let's see what we got on some of these. Yeah. So, yeah. let's start with the uh, the pilsner, I think, um, sure. which would be the. That's a Mexican lager. Okay, then let's start with Mexican lager. All right. So Mexican lagers being Scott's favorite style. Well, it's one of my favorite styles. That's actually really well done. Um, it's got kind of a nice full mouthfeel. Some Mexican lagers are pretty, very thin. It's also got a creaminess to it that uh, I'm not as familiar with with some Mexican lagers. Uh, again, my go-to is Stetsons and Sombreros with uh, Iron Fire. I think I might actually like that better. It's Stetsons and Sombreros? Yeah, I think I might. Wow. That's really good. Now that's not the wow. same thing about Iron Fire, but that's a fantastic, uh, well-executed Mexican lager. Um, good job on that. Yep. Nice, nice work. So okay. granted, like, because we're going to be doing a lot of beer tasting today, we're not going to stop and review all the beers for this clip here at Dark Sky. But we want to at least hit a couple more uh, to kind of give you guys an idea of what you can expect. Yeah. Um, let's move on to, let's say, like the IPA. Yeah, so this is a hazy IPA. Um, so this one is, oh goodness, which one was it? Uh, I think this was rainy the day. New England oh, Hazy. Yeah, Rainy Day? Yeah, the Rainy Day Haze. Rainy Day Haze, okay. So New England, uh, Citra, Mosaic, uh, Sabro, notes of lemon, pineapple, gra grapefruit, coconut finish, actually. Which... Right on. Very straightforward. Like, um, I can see where they get the, the coconut finish, like almost like it's a different, softer finish than expected. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and as many of you know, if you follow, I'm not a huge fan of New England IPAs, but um, I always like to try them out at places I haven't been to in a while, because some places have a different take on them a little bit. So you know, definitely got the uh, the correct color. Very tropical. Yep. Very tropical. I immediately got coconut. Really? Yeah, it's on the mean. nose and on the mouthfeel. That's really, really good. Nice. That's really good. That's, um, I would say it's surprisingly good, but from what I've had from Dark Sky in the past, I would not, I'm not surprised. So Dark Sky does a lot of experimental beers. Um, so if you come here 
every few months, um, then you're gonna have something different every time. That's kind of like the, the appeal. Yeah. The Dark Sky is they are doing a lot, like constantly changing their system. If you uh, you'll see on the the quick little tour I gave before recording this, you can see exactly how small their system is. But they're doing a lot of great beers on that. Yep. So, so um, I think one of the last ones, just to give a variety. So we had a light beer, an IPA. Just go to their uh, Ola Oscura, which is the Imperial Stout. Um, yep. And uh, this is a big boy at 13%. So we're going to give this a shot. What are you oh, wow. smelling? That's just, that's got a lot. I really smell the cherry. All right, I smell the cherry. Pretty dark, roasty. I definitely get that toasted coconut. That's an amazing beer. Because all of the things that they say that should you, you should taste in there, I actually get those. Sometimes those those subtle notes are so subtle that you don't find them. I find them in there. That's the cherry. I'm glad the cherry is actually more subdued. But I think as it warms up, that the cherry and the coconut are be more prevalent. Probably or, or even make it sweeter as like the bourbon notes like yeah. come out. It's probably going to. But you know what? I think from just these three right here, we can say one. These guys know what they're doing. Yep. They're making clean fresh beer but they play around with a lot of stuff too so if you make it a flagstaff stop in check them out okay, they got beer to go they got food here uh and uh it's just just a cool little joint so right. definitely guys so on make to the it next up. place yep on to the next place Okay, so we are now at our second location, uh, which is at Mother Road Brewing Company. We are doing what I am now calling our Flights of Flagstaff. And uh, I think I'm punny. We'll see what you guys think. You can let us know in the comments. Let us know. Yep. But uh, I know this is one of Aaron's, uh, I think, I don't know if it's a gem in your heart, but I think it is. Like you talk about this right. place a lot and he's brought me here before. And you know, it's a cool building. So, I mean, what what is it about Mother Road that just keeps making you, I mean, you, you bring them up a lot. Well, part of it is like, they're also, they're the small independent brewery here in Flag, obviously. Uh, it's a very intimate environment. Now this is their original location. And um, normally when you don't have COVID issues or uh, social distancing, this place is packed. Uh, just wall to wall people. And the interesting part is you can kind of see behind us, that was their original area where they had all their fermenters and all their tanks. Oh yeah, I remember that from it. last time. I remember it was really like really like pushed in there. Yeah, right. I do remember that. Uh, so they now have an offsite uh, location where they do the majority of their brewing because they actually can get they have four mainstays that you can get in the valley, but they always have specialty beers. Another reason why I kind of like it is um, like the automotive theme that kind of goes along with being along historic Route 66. Yeah. And so the beers that we're doing here today are not uh, their mainstays. Uh, we decided to get their mm -hmm. limited release one-off kind of beers. Um, and so we're just going to go through a couple of these for you, uh, and then um, we'll move on to the next joint. But what, what should we start? Well, what, what do we got uh, here in front of us? Well, as you guys can see, uh, so the first one is Low Beams. This is a, a pale lager with, infused with strawberry and lemon botanicals. Okay. Uh, they're saying it's a fruity nose without actually using fruit. Okay. Uh, the next one is going to be a Pink Boots Brew. This is actually uh, an IPA brewed with collaboration of Pink Boots. Uh, Pink Boots. Pink Boots. Pink Boots. Uh, they also have a cask version that's uh, available as well, but we got the uh, CO2 version. Yeah. Third one is going to be the Roadside Grove. This is an American IPA, basically in honor of basically California and Los Angeles, basically citrus. Okay. A grapefruit and citrus forward American IPA. Um, and then we have fourth is a Pluto Porter. This is a traditional English style porter. So basically we're supposed to be getting like chocolate and vanilla. And then lastly is their Barrel Age Imperial Stout on Nitro. Um, we've actually had some of their anniversary ales uh, before their Barrel Age anniversary at Strong Beer Festival. They're phenomenal. So check out one of our other videos uh, to see that. I think I actually am still sitting on one of those that you it's brought me. It's really yeah. good. Uh, so this one's going to be a Colorado whiskey. Uh, then aged with their Imperial Stout. And they're just saying it's going to be a mellow, toasty sweetness with molasses and raisin. So probably by the time you're watching this, if you're not already in Flagstaff, these may not even be here. Yep. Uh, but then you can come down and drink beers and let us know what beers we didn't get to try because we're not here. So 
Let's let's do just a few of these. Um, I'm really interested in checking out right. this this first one. The low bean. So, uh, so strawberry and oh gosh, what was it? It's botanical strawberry and lemon botanicals without adding any fruit. Okay, so I definitely get strawberry okay. on the nose, but those botanicals, that kind of herbaceousness from those, like a also, saison or? yeah, okay. um, sort of really uh, meld and blend together to create a very distinct aroma uh, with those two flavors. This one is supposed to be a uh, pale log. Oh, that's really light, really refreshing. Ooh, I can smell this. Yeah, it's strawberry. Okay, it actually right has there. kind of a from the carbonation. It reminds me of a mouthfeel like a uh, uh, like a uh, seltzered water almost. Yeah. Um, very easy drinking. That thing is super crushable. Yep. For those of you guys who like those uh, hard seltzers. Yeah, this is a beer for you for that. It's it's not it's not aggressive. It's um, only at four point eight, so yeah, so you it's, drink it's, a lot of it. It's it actually drinks a lot less than four point eight. But it's really interesting. It is how fruity it is without having any fruit. Yeah, and I was really surprised at first when it hit my mouth, that mouthfeel of just the tingly from the carbonation. Obviously, all beer has that. Um, but right, that, that really seltzer. sort of hits you like a yeah. seltzer sort of sort of um, mouthfeel. So yeah, that's that's a solid beer. I could drink a lot of that. Now, the one I think I want to jump into, I want to try this roadside. This, okay. This California-inspired American IPA. Um, I love like citrus forward IPAs. Okay. Well, and of course, as Aaron goes diving into that, I mean, the reality is is that uh, California, specifically Southern California, is known for its citrus. I live in an area, Riverside County, that oranges and grapefruits were what put Riverside on the map. Uh, at one point, Riverside was producing uh, well over 70% of California's uh, citrus. Uh, and so it's not surprising that this is an eau de SoCal. Right, so this one is not a West Coast, so it's not, it's a very well-balanced IPA. However, it is very grapefruit forward, but don't think grapefruit as in the bitter, like the rind. Think more citrus. Like the juice? Without the juice. Kind of like the, with the, uh, without the fruit. Grapefruit without the juice. You'll see what I mean. Okay. Okay, the, the aroma is, is citrusy, mm -hmm. but I get a bit of, of a tropical note as well, but. I can see that. Oh yeah, you definitely get kind of like a pink grapefruit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not it's not tart, no. like a, like a grapefruit juice would be. But you, yeah, it's 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 a pink grapefruit. It's almost like they took grapefruit pink grapefruit pulp and muddled it in. Perhaps yeah. I guess that would be the way I might describe that. That's um, easy, very easy drinking too. Yeah, I, I don't get as much. Oh, that's seven point three. Lemon, no way. That is seven point three. That drinks like a crushable six percent. If that. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who are super into session IPAs, which is, you know, for namesake, I guess a pale ale. Yeah, um, it's really easy drinking, and seven, I'm surprised at alcohol content on that. Yeah, they, they did a good job. They dialed that in. Okay. All right. Now, I think just because of how big it is, we got to do, we got to do the... What is it? So, you're going to jump right into the barrel. I think Actually, we got to just jump. It's you not know? even that big. Um, What's the ABV on that? Nine. Nine percent? Okay. Or we just came from Dark Sky, which we had 13 percenter. Yeah, and that thing was delicious. The yeah. cherry on that was great. Yeah. Now you can smell the whiskey on this. Okay. That's that, that kind of Aromatics woody are whiskey. Really yeah. Kicking up, eh? And I'm wondering if that has to do with it being on nitro. It kind of pushes those aromas a little bit more because it might be a little bit warmer coming. I don't know. Oh yeah. Boozy. Yeah. <laughs> Big whiskey flavors on that. Um, you get whatever whiskey they're pulling that from. There's notes of chocolate in there for sure because that, that's coming I, off. Yeah, that's coming off. That's boozy. Definitely got boozy. But see, it doesn't drink boozy. Like when I think of boozy, I think of something like Bottle Logic or Black well, Tuesday, where it's really kind of viscous and inky. I'm not getting that. With no, this. no, it's really it's very smooth and drinking drinkable, but. The notes of it, yeah, this has got whiskey in it. Yeah, it's definitely, there you, go. you know, this is definitely a whiskey drinker's beer right here, which I happen to be a big fan of bourbon whiskey, which tends to be a little bit more sweet. I think they said this was an American whiskey, uh, right? Colorado. Okay, Colorado. So yeah, you're you're probably going to get more of that kind of charcoal, charred oak, although yeah. bourbon also charred oak, but that's an interesting beer. Now, if, great beer. I wonder which, if, which this was, two, if this which, was on CO2, I think that actually that burnt notes would actually have been harsher. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I guess on nitro, that's going to mill it up. 
which one right now would you prefer, the Dark Sky or the Mother Road? Oh, they're totally different, different categories. Totally different, but they're both barrel-aged, whiskey-aged. Right. I mean, totally different. I mean, but at the same time... <laughs> That's a hard question. Yeah, putting them on the spot, yeah. right? I think, personally, I liked the Dark Sky one a little bit better the flavors were because the flavors were just like nuanced. all over the place but this is a lot easier to drink i think it's a lot creamier um i think the mouthfeel is quite quite pleasant on that so you know and saying that one beer i would rather it over another has nothing to say about right. the quality of this beer no, and that's the thing like, there's nothing wrong with, uh, well the three we've had we're gonna try these other ones in a bit but uh yeah once again just quality beer coming out of flagstaff arizona yeah so definitely come do your own flight of flagstaff check out Dark Sky, check out Mother Road. They also, and, uh, it's a build yeah. your own flight, which means in theory, you can have every single one of these in a taster. Which means by the end, you probably wouldn't remember what you had at the start. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you know what? Maybe you're, maybe you're able Ambitious. to do that. Yeah, I don't know, maybe you are, I don't know, so. All right, well, but, we're gonna drink this up and then head off to the, ne the next place. So we'll see you at the next place. Okay, so every brewery we go to is a special brewery, right? We love them, we like them, we respect them. But there's something particularly special about where we are today. Right, so right now we are actually at Historic Brewing Company, but not at their OG location, but in their new downtown tasting room in downtown Flagstaff. Yeah, it's super awesome. It's It's got kind of like a... Uh, almost like a, a it's an industrial train yeah <laughs> and there's either there's got like a backsplash of, of like brick and uh, it's just it's really really inviting and a very nice uh, patio this dog yeah. friendly patio absolutely but what is the reason why historic brewing is so special because I mean this isn't necessarily a brewery that I think is well known across the United States no it's not um, and so what why is this particular location so important to us well for us uh, beers and buddies uh, obviously if you've been following us for any time We've been making a, mostly a Instagram, Facebook content, but we do YouTube content every now and again as well. And the first video that we did for an extended period of time was in, here in Flagstaff, but more specifically at Historic Brewing Company. So because of that, uh, this, like I said earlier in our introduction, that this is kind of like a homecoming for us in starting Beers and Buddies uh, online video content. Yeah, so we're back here today, we're gonna try some beers that we haven't had before. Um, at least I tried to change it up so that it wasn't um, the same stuff that we right. had last time, but that was so long ago, frankly, yeah. I probably don't remember it. Well, the most common uh, beer that they're known for is their uh, Five Hole Porter. It's a cherry, cherry pie porter beer that's actually you can get in the valley now. Um, so it's, it's starting to get some Yeah, some traction. Yeah. But so Scott ordered six different beers and so I, I wasn't at the counter so he'll have to tell you what you actually picked up. Yeah, and I didn't write down the styles here, just the names. I'm gonna have to look back at the board. Uh, but I've got a Russian Imperial Stout here, uh, number one. We're not gonna start with that. I've got, uh, it's called Oceanfront Property for number two. And it's basically like a light American lager. Very, uh, super clean. Super clean. Um, Eight Joy Ride, number three, that's gonna be a rye IPA. I chose that because we haven't had a rye IPA in, like rye in a while. And I do like rye, they're good. Um, 11 Space, uh, 11 is the number. Uh, space Moments, I believe that is the IPA. That's a, an American IPA. Look how clean that is, folks. Yeah, well I was told it was an American IPA. I don't know for sure because I haven't had it. Um, number 13, that is a Milk Stout. And then we've got a Cream Ale as well. Um, so, I think we need to dive right into the uh, light logger. Uh, oceanfront property. Oceanfront property, right. uh, which, you know, that's obviously an ode to uh, George Strait, oceanfront property in Arizona, Arizona right. which if you don't know your geography, or, just or keep George looking. Strait. Yeah, just keep looking for your oceanfront property until Arizona if you can find it. Because <laughs> right. there isn't any. So, all right, what do you, what do we, what, we're going to start with this. What do you, what do you get? What are you thinking? Well, compared to some of the other beers we had that were like these lighter lagers, uh, the sweetness is not on this like we were experiencing in other places. Look slightly bready, but yeah, man, that is just crystal clean. Super clean, super clean. You know, and on a hot day, it's probably super refreshing. Yeah, I mean, it, this, it's not complex. Very simple, straightforward. Um, just basic flavors. I mean, it is 
quality. 4.8%. Yeah, I mean, it's you want a light lager beer? Someone asks, hey, uh, what do you got that's closest to a, like an American domestic, like a Coors or a Bud Light, but quality. That's it. Uh, that's it. Yeah. There's nothing complex to it. No. It's very straightforward beer. And that, that, that's probably exactly what it may, what it's meant to be. Very um, approachable for anybody who doesn't drink craft beer, who just says, hey, I, I like my Coors or my, my Bud Light, they, but you want to give them something of better quality. I think it's got a little bit more creamy flavor to it than say like Bud Light. That's probably just because of the grain build, right? They're not using rice or adjuncts in this. Um, that's a solid beer. I could drink a lot of this by the pool in uh, Phoenix if it, if it ever gets down that far. I don't know. Or the Inland Empire where I live, right. which, you know, good for us. So, so a third one, only because uh, I don't like them, I'm going to do it pick it up and drink it is the rye, rye IPA. IPA. I chose that because I, one, don't see rye IPAs too often, um, and I love them. So I had to I had to try it here. It's a historic moment here at, uh, yeah, I'm a dad. Dad, dad okay. jokes. Dad jokes, okay? That's what happens. So for this one, I mean, well, I'm a, I, I started off the first one, you can go ahead. Oh yeah, let me, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Oh God. That's actually a nod yeah, off to, uh, I think it's Weems. Kind of well, Weems Brewing Company made a rye, and they oh, called it okay. All Rye, All Rye, All Rye. Uh, but yeah, Jeez. Matthew McConaughey. Okay, so uh -oh. the hop, no, that's good. The hops are there. This is a very rye forward rye IPA. Um, so if you don't like spicy, herbaceous characters on your beer, which I do, I also like them on my whiskey, you may not love this, but you, I would suggest try it. You know, that way you've had it. I could drink a lot of that. It's a, for someone who doesn't like rye IPAs, it's not bad. It's just, there are certain characters, that spicy bite bitter that comes along with rye, that just lingers. Not pleasant for me. Well, it's also got quality. a, it's also got like a sweet it sweetness from the malt uh, it on it as well. Um, in fact, this may be a pale ale. I'm trying to look here. It's kind of hard to see. Well, you look up on tap. Yeah, rye IPA. That's what they're calling it is an IPA. Um, but, you know, if you can find rye IPAs and you like rye IPAs and you're here, I mean, you. gra gra <laughs> grab a pint or two. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, right? Because, I don't know. He thinks it's all rye. I think it's great. <laughs> wow. Let's see how many bad dad jokes I can fit into this one, Megan, and make it a very historic moment. Dude, you already used that joke. Remember? Can't use it twice. I can't use it again. No. Oh, too bad. All right, so let's let's do one more. What what do we what are we thinking here? You want We've been doing the big uh, boys. Yeah, milk stout or this Russian imperial? Well, we've been doing the Russian imperials because we've actually interestingly we've had a Russian imperial. Yeah, at guy. every single one yeah. that we've been at today. So yeah. I think uh, to keep it uh, historic Dude, and consistent. Three times. <laughs> it's like, that horse is dead. Yeah, the horse is dead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so what All do right. we got? What do we got? So is it barrel aged or is it just? I think it is not barrel aged. Okay. I'm looking. It, and I don't smell, you know if there's supposed to be any adjuncts in this, like any special. Nope, players. it doesn't say anything. Nope, just says Russian Imperial Stout, okay. nine and a half percent. So get a straight Russian Imperial. Okay. So we're just letting the the malt do its work, which frankly I love. Um, it smells like just a straight. It doesn't smell anything yeah. beyond that. Before. I will say I have found this to be a little bit more true here in Arizona that Russian Imperial Stouts are being brewed with just the hops, just the grain. There's definitely some places that are throwing the uh, adjunct flavors in, but I'm really pleased to see that. Russian Imperial Stouts are laying just to stand on their own without these extra flavors. This one is a little sweeter than I would like. Um, like sweet from like dark fruit or? I would say sweet like dark fruit. Okay, I so like prune like, and raisin? Right. I okay. would uh, want to have this a little bit more, more roasty. Okay. Uh, it, the roast is there, don't get me wrong, but uh, for me a lot of also Russian Imperials you know, have a little roushy. Uh, yeah. They can. Yeah, yeah. They don't always, but they can. I, I like that. And this does not have as much of that as I would like. Okay. Well, let's see what, what I think of it. Aside from that, solid beer. It's very true to style. Scott's going to probably love it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you definitely get those. Um, it's more raisin right. than prune. Um, 
I, I, I do I'm not get sure some malt, of those. Yeah, they're malt bill. Gave that those notes. I feel some chocolate there off the end. Um, some bitter cocoa. Um, that's a solid beer. Nothing wrong with that. Nine and a half percent. I don't know if I could drink two of them at that ABV. Well, I mean, that's not super high, but it's beginning yeah. to push. So. But all things considered, now it's a solid beer as far as yeah. like the recipe. It's not my favorite recipe, but I would still drink this as a quality beer. Yeah, I, I think so far, I, I think all three of them so far have been really solid. Um, I think for me, out of the three so far, that rye, just because I don't get them often, I love them. You Give know. me that oceanfront property, man. But they're great. <laughs> it's like, going to be worth a lot of money if you find that oceanfront property. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna uh, drink uh, the rest of these and then head on to the next brewery, which is actually the nice thing about Flagstaff is very similar to Portland. Um, granted, there's not as many breweries, but there's a quite a few either tap room and or breweries, all within a walking distance, maybe five minutes or less uh, of each other. So you can hit about five or six within a single day of just an afternoon, just walking from one to the other. And also, Flagstaff because it is a college town. It's also a food town too, so you have a lot of great food around here, not just here. Yes, although I haven't sampled any of the food except at Dark Sky, I did have a pizza. pizza. So, yeah. so we're yeah. gonna drink these and head on to the next slide. So we will see you next time. Yeah. Yes. Hey everybody, so we are now here in Sedona, Arizona. This is definitely not Flagstaff. And a part of the reason why we're in Sedona is because, well, they were there was a fire. Yeah, a fairly, I don't know if it was a controlled burn or if it was something that broke out, but it was about a 44 minute just pile up. And uh, we were on our way to a, a different brewery on our way home that was a little bit, two. yeah, that were a little bit more on the route but the traffic just was so rancid, so bad. So we decided to come here, uh, which is cool because we didn't, I didn't even know that these existed. Um, yeah, so yeah. pretty awesome. So a couple breweries, this is the first of the two. We are currently at yeah, Sedona Beer Company. That's yeah, it. I think it's Beer Company. I don't think it's Brewing Company. Oh, yeah, Sedona Beer, beer Co. Company. Yeah. Sedona Beer Co. I think it's been here since 2016. So it's not super old, but it is fairly established. Mm -hmm. Obviously they've got uh, a following of folks it's actually sitting above the downtown area. As you kind of go through, you see kind of the, mm -hmm. the more popular, I don't want to say this place isn't popular, but the, it looks the like there's a lot areas. more touristy areas. And this sort of sits above that a little bit. You can see, of course, behind us, um, the, the beautiful, the beautiful mountains. Yeah. So this is a pretty pristine place to come and drink a beer. Uh, we haven't tried any of these yet. Um, I think we have a wide range. We got things yeah. from my box to a peppermint porter to a scotch ale. Horchata beer. Yeah, all kinds of different things yeah. um, that we're gonna get uh, get a try on here. The um, only thing I don't see on here is a stout. No, this is our first brewery of the day without a stout. Or an imperial stout for that, or yeah. a Russian. Or an IPA. Actually, right now they don't have an IPA on either. They have this double IPA. Uh, but they don't have it here currently. So oh. I think the closest thing you're gonna get is this pale ale uh, that we, uh, or pale ale that we, <laughs> <laughs> that we, that we got. So um, yeah, that's where we're sitting at. Cool, so we're gonna drink this and then head off to our last stop of the day before heading home. And then we will let you guys know what we thought of both of these breweries in a wrap up final conclusion. Yep. The big crescendo. <laughs> but as time, to drink, time to drink beer. Time to drink beer. All right, everybody, we are wrapping up our uh, Northern Arizona Brewery Tour, and we are here at Oak Creek Brewing Company in the heart of Sedona. Oh, Scott's gonna get the, the, see the logo. So it's a little tight, a little loud, so we figured we we're just gonna try to just do a quick wrap up, but uh, we're gonna have some dinner and some beer. There's beers. But, we actually, because we were, had to wait for a little while, we were able to get a couple beers. We have their Hefeweizen, which is a GABF award-winning Hefeweizen, yep. and their IPA. Uh, and so we decided after that to try everything. So 32 ounces of beer, and we have a two hour drive home. So you can imagine this is gonna be beers and buddies becomes peas and buddies. 
Good gosh. That's right. I said Pete. It happened. All right, guys. So uh, thanks for watching this. Uh, hopefully you had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun making it. So uh, cheers as always and uh, from our beer. To your buddy. Salute. Bye.